through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. I have a very special episode right now. I am joined by the cast of the Dodeca Pentathlon. We've got Steve Zissis, Jennifer LaFleur, and Mark Kelly. Um, people who you will hopefully know much better now in the near future. Um, this film is a drama about two brothers who have a little bit of bad blood built up uh, after a competition went awry as children. Uh, what is it like to sort of try and play a dysfunctional family, but also be dysfunctional in a way that you're still endearing to people and not like completely obnoxious and disengaging? That's a really good question. Well, <laughs> well, I can say like uh, in in my real life, I have an older brother, and uh, I've got two older brothers. Yeah. And uh, when we were kids, um, he had a very good arm and very good hand-eye coordination. He played baseball, was an excellent pitcher, and he would take pine cones and he would just start <laughs> counting. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my signal to run. And I, my fat little chubby body would start running as fast as it could, but inevitably he would just peg me square on the head with a pine cone. Uh, my brother would dress me up in <laughs> ski coats and ski goggles and start counting and uh, <laughs> shoot at me with either bottle rockets or BB guns. <laughs> and, uh, but we loved each other. It was always the problems were resolved within 24 hours. So that, that maybe answers your question about staying endearing is we enjoyed the uh, controlled, contained, loving violence. Well, that's a good thing about family. You can <laughs> abuse each other and call each other names and attack each other and rumble and then you know next time we see each other you can usually just let it go and move on hug it out and watch an r-rated movie when the parents were asleep and... <laughs> but i mean i think for me it's even bigger in terms of how important your performances were because um you know like i i, I frequently when i talk with friends talk about the film very bad things like i just can't enjoy that film because everybody I just dislike. I yeah. find all the characters unlikable. And yeah, you know, there's this balance with the family characters you played and that, you know, ultimately, you know, they love each other, their family, stuff like that. But, I mean, you guys have so much competition, like, you know, your relationships get so stretched right. and stuff that it could have been very easy to make your characters dislikable. Totally. And so how do you sort of make it, you know... <laughs> dislikability likable like, yeah. it, that seems like a challenge as an actor well I mean even though the the film is very much improvised the Mark and Jay wrote a beautiful script that really laid out these very three dimensional <clears throat> characters they're very aware that um, you know Mark could very easily just be the D-bag and Steve could just be the depressed loser or I could be the you know snarly wife um, but they, they kind of set us up to to see that the, there was so much heart. And, and just speaking as an actor opposite these two, there was never a moment that um, that they were just like playing a playing a stereotype. They were playing everything with so much heart. And that's a huge testament to Mark and Jay's script and also to the way that you guys played it. Yeah, Mark and Jay set sort of a, a standard of from the crew everywhere and has big hearts. That's how they approach their work, that's who they bring to help them tell these stories and as competitive as we were and, and playing these roles and getting way into it in between takes, I mean these these two are just such giving actors and giving people, it was just, we were cheering each other on when totally. the camera was on and these the, when they were doing scenes, it was just a fun like atmosphere of uh, just rooting for one another. I think also too um, with Mark's character he really wants love, you know? He really wants love from his older brother. Uh, and I think that's endearing. So even though he's, like, antagonistic, you uh, you feel that in him, and that makes him uh, appealing. And then for me, I think I really want to, like, feel alive. And I think that, that that's something that people can probably relate to because I'm, like, kind of a sad sack and for most of the movie. And then when I start competing, I just turn into a, <laughs> an animal. <Yeah. laughs> 
for Jen's character, she <laughs> stabilizes us and brings that reality of like, you know, the importance of the big picture, you yeah. know, and family and and just stability and you know. Uh, She's the balancing agent. Yeah, and you I sympathize think. with her. I mean, you're just like looking at these guys. Like, how could you be doing this to this woman who <clears throat> loves her husband and her son and wants to give him this wonderful birthday and getaway and you know time with his mom? And so it's just it's it's fun to see it all come together. Thank you, Mark. Well, it's it's interesting because you guys almost have sort of like the opposite journeys. Like you start out like completely. <laughs> fixated on you know this battle between you two and you're like the sole single guy from las vegas who like doesn't care about family and you journey along to be like you know this is something i i want like the kid's great i love i, I love a wife stuff like that whereas your character starts out sort of sad and he's like distance himself from the whole competition yeah. um but at some point, you really do just sort of snap. What is is there is there sort of like in in terms of like you know improv? How do you sort of keep that sort of balance going because so much of it's just being made up on the spot? You have to keep like in the back of your mind. You're like, oh yeah, yesterday I improv that or I improv that because I mean, if there's actually like a record of it, yeah. like it's easier to know what's what's going on. But if this is like fluidly shifting as things go on, totally. that seems like it would be a uh, complicated. Uh, like for me, that would be a nightmare. Yeah. like that would honestly be a nightmare. Well, Jay Doobie and Nat Sanders edited this movie and. I don't know how because I think there are probably 78 different versions of the film and and we didn't really know how it was going to turn out. I mean, there were certain days that we would finish and we'd be like, okay, the story's totally different now. And we would all kind of get together and talk about what, what had happened, what had come up in mm-hmm. a scene, how this changes the direction of the, the film. But I had no idea what I was going to be seeing when when it was done. I, I didn't know how it was going to end. I didn't know whether it was going to be an explosive scene where there's things like being thrown across the room, or whether it's going to be, you know, me, you know, zerberting Steve's belly. You know, because we yeah. shot the same exact scene in two completely different ways, or, or more like ten different ways. Yeah. So the <clears throat> Mark and Jay carving out a story. And Nat and Jay Doobie carving out the story was uh, that. I mean, they're really the storytellers. Yeah, and of course, Mark and Jay are masters at, at handling this chaos, and they're just within that chaos. They're just laser focused on what they want to achieve, and they cover everything so many different ways. I mean, scenes that may have been written in the original script to be comedic ends up being the dramatic scene that they didn't even realize, you know, until we're in it. And they, you know, we would, like Jen said, talk over kind of what we did, and then they would be right there to remind us yeah. what we did. Somebody asked me last night if uh, we if we broke into laughter a lot when we were shooting, and I don't think we really did because I think we we became so dedicated to our characters and like really we're just rooting for for our own characters and for each other that I think the only times we laughed were were. As I mean, it was hard to separate at the end of the day that I wasn't actually married to Steve, <laughs> and that I didn't actually hate Mark. Um, but you know, I, I think that it, it was it was a tricky balance. I was just gonna say, uh, for me, I've I've worked with Jay and Mark before, and working in this style is thrilling for me. I mean, because they have so much faith in us. They allow us to to act and sort of write at the same time in the moment. So mm-hmm. it's like you're acting, you're playing moment to moment, but you're also like writing at the same time. Yeah. Um, and that's just fun. I mean, it doesn't always come out good, but that's like Jen said, that's where the editing comes into play. Like Mark said, that's where uh, Jay and Mark's guidance comes into play too. So um it's just thrilling to work that yeah, way. Yeah, and they're absolutely honest about everything, you know. And it, it, they're not going to just kind of let you stray into what you think is a, this great moment that, mm-hmm. if it's not, you know. And that's just something you have to embrace as an actor to just know that you're not going to be exposed as in, in a 
crappy yeah. false moment, you know. And they're guiding us in between scenes and also during scenes, too. I mean, Steve and I would be locked in <laughs> something true. really intense, and all of a sudden you'd hear <laughs> J2 Plus like whisper, kiss him, kiss him right now, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever. Or tell him he's a jerk. Tell him he's a jerk and walk away. You know, so, and, and they would you know, just be like these little puppeteers <laughs> yeah. of, of grabbing onto whatever they see that's working for, for the story that they have in their minds to make, make the best story. I remember one example is I'm yeah. sitting on the bed with my shirt off and Mark Duplass goes, okay, Steve, now look down at your man boobs. <laughs> he did. I remember that. <laughs> See, that's the direction of a clearly a guy who knows what he's after. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. It's fun. It's a moment. <laughs> so this film... You know, it's coming out 2012. I guess it was actually shot three or four years ago. Four. What is that like as an actor? Do you just sort of like close the chapter on that book and like no. do do you, I mean you're assuming someday it's going to see the light of day, but like someday. Do, I, like yeah. is it does it hurt? Or are you just assuming that it's just you know when it's time comes it it'll hurts be there? In different parts of your body, <laughs> different parts of the day, and believe me, you know you think about it every single day. I, so, I would be getting texts from this guy like. Like by by heard monthly, anything. <laughs> heard anything? Like what's the latest? What's happening? <laughs> like, is to, it done? Got to the point where I was afraid Steve was gonna <laughs> just like ignore me and like think that <laughs> that's all I was calling about, which it was. But yeah. uh, <laughs> is there any sort of sense like you know uh, actors? You know when they get really famous, then there will be these movies that they're in when they're younger that'll be like blown up. Be like, oh Jennifer Aniston, and you know like uh, was it a uh, the leprechaun movie or whatever and they'll be like advertise it with like jennifer aniston <laughs> totally. even though it was like it was like such a small movie for her. do you get that sense like now that you guys have been you know acting for several years since then that's mm-hmm. like oh yeah that film that i was in all the way back then i, I have i have a lot of career since then like right. this is that was that was me maybe a rougher me since i've been doing this longer mm-hmm. but it's still you know it's it's not necessarily rep- representative of what i'm doing now maybe uh i just you know, looking at the movie, I just think, wow, I had more hair back then. <laughs> that's, that's it. I mean, I can honestly say I, this is something I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I mean, I, I'm so grateful to be in this movie and to see the end result four years later was well worth the wait. And so I'm looking forward to watching this with friends and family, you know, many times into the years. And so, ah, it's awesome. <laughs> It's, it's sort of funny to think about, though. Like, this is something you've probably been telling them about for <clears throat> years now. You're like, oh, yeah, I swear I did this yeah, movie with totally. you. Or, is it finally, like, gratifying to be able to, like, show that to the world and really be like, okay, I've been telling you about yeah. this for so long. This is an actual movie. Well, we did make it. It's not a lie. I wasn't joking. You start to feel a little bit like the boy who cried wolf. Like, God, no, 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 seriously, seriously. You know those Duplass brothers, that movie Cyrus? I know, it's so awesome. I'm, I'm in their next movie. And then they're like, oh, Jeff, who lives at home? I'm like... No, no, not that one. A different one. You know, and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're telling everybody like, oh, I did this movie and it was so fun and it was. I think it's gonna have a lot of heart. I think people are gonna enjoy it, um, and and be able to relate to it. And and you're just like sitting there, kind of twiddling your thumbs and waiting and waiting. I think the moment it clicked in was on Thursday. Fox Searchlight and Red Flag Films announced that they had picked up the film and it was gonna be distri- distributed, and I got to like put that on my Facebook page and say, yeah. it's happening, people. It's real. It's real. I told you, it's happening. Um, and I and I was. I was like, you know, kind of jumping up and down, like, okay, now it's real. It feels very, very real and, and palpable now. Does it sort of feel like, you know, like a child that you're sending out into the world? Because this is, I mean, this was pre-Cyrus. <laughs> like, you go, you go way back yeah. with them, so to speak. And is it like, finally, you're putting this out in the world to see, and there's sort of like a protectiveness, and you want to see it succeed. And yeah. really, because it, th- in some ways, I mean, you know, this is an indie film. Like, this is Very true. Like, vintage Duplass. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like a real passion project. Whereas, you know, like Jeff, who lives at home, like Jason Segel and Ed Helms are in it. Like, yeah. you don't have to do so Susan much Sarandon. to, like put that out there for people to enjoy it totally yeah. um, so this is like this is your baby that you are pushing out there yeah mm-hmm. absolutely 
Um, I, I just I, I just hope they do a C-section. <laughs> I, I don't even want to try and think of what that might be. No, I was just going with the baby metaphor. Sorry. <laughs> Some sort of flash mob or something. <laughs> I don't know. You can just take it out and... You know, without any more pain. Yeah, I don't yeah. want any more pain. Yeah. Well, I can't say that. Just take the baby out. <laughs> right, what do I know? About what that? do you guys know about childbirth? Okay. <laughs> but I mean, this is this is so. This was three or four years ago. You guys have come a long way since then. You know what? What of note have you guys done since then that you might want people to check out now that they're going to find out more about you and go look back at your careers? And what do you guys have coming out going forward that people might want to keep their eyes out for? Uh, I want them to see my uh, slimy role in Jeff Who Lives at Home, where yeah. I try to wreck a marriage in a way. Uh, oh, I know. And, and I I enjoyed it very much. I've gone on record as saying that's my favorite film thus far this year. So you did a, you did a good job with that. Thanks, really bro. good job. Um, I've just you know been up to, to a bunch of little things. I do a lot of theater in New York. And um, I just finished a little indie film called Mutual Friends, which will come out probably later this year with a great cast of awesome indie people. I've had the pleasure of reoccurring the role of Dale on Mad Men, and yeah, I, uh, that's awesome. It's an incredible place to work, um, and I had a, a thriller come out. It was very personal. It started as a short called Removal, uh, starring Billy Burke and Oz Perkins, and you, and myself, and uh, <laughs> Emma Caulfield and uh, Elliot Gould. Wow, and that was it's a fun mind bender thriller, and then. Um, a movie called Answers to Nothing that Roadside Attractions released in December that's a kind of a crash-style drama. Oh, very cool. So. And websites, I'm presuming, Twitter or something. People people need to be able to get in contact with <laughs> you. I have just started tweeting uh, at this festival, actually. I'm at LaFleur Jennifer. And you just started tweeting, too, Steve. I just started tweeting. I'm at Steve Zissis. I'm at Go Mark Kelly. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I wish you, you luck with Dodecapentathlon, and you can find more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Like, don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game, and it feels all right.